You are listening to the BBNI podcast, Journeys of Faith, Leadership and Life. Welcome to the BBNI podcast. I'm Bethany Smith, Engagement Officer and Program Coordinator at BBNI. Our podcast series is about sharing journeys of faith, leadership and life. At BBNI, our object is to advance Christ's kingdom among children and young people. This is done every week in our BB companies. One way of engaging children and young people with the gospel is through our programmes. We partner with other organisations to enhance our programmes, keeping our centre focused on Christ. I'm delighted to be here today with Sarah Coughlin, who is the Youth Ministry Coordinator at Scripture Union Northern Ireland. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Nice to have you. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Brilliant. Um, before we start, Sarah, um, I'm only meeting you today mm-hmm. and a few people on the podcast as well may not know who you are. Can you tell us a little bit about your life, faith journey, work life, a bit of background on who you are? Yeah. Uh, so a little bit about me is that I live in Bangor. I live really, really close to my family. I also live really close to the beach. I love my family. I love the beach. So that's really, really good. Um, my faith journey really starts actually before I was even born, which might sound a little bit weird. But uh, my grandpa believed in Jesus and he believed in the power of prayer. And so my grandpa at half six every morning would get up and he would pray and he wouldn't just pray for the things in front of him he would pray for the things that maybe he knew he would never see and so one of those prayers was for his unborn grandchildren to yeah it was amazing to know who uh, Jesus was and I'm one of uh, seven grandchildren I never met him and every single one of us we've all had different journeys but we all love and we follow Jesus and so his uh really his life and his kind of testimony uh really has encouraged me I suppose to pray not only for the things in front of me but to pray for me to pray for the things that we may never see um growing up I was one of the quietest girls in school uh, anyone that knows me will know that I am in no way quiet and so actually I struggled with a lot of anxiety in school growing up school wasn't an easy place uh, for me to be But my mum and dad, they really love Jesus. They always raised us to know about Jesus. But I was probably, I wasn't that rebellious growing up, to be honest. Um, But my rebellion was, I don't want to follow Jesus just because you told me that I should. And so it wasn't until I was at Summer Madness at the age of 14. (laughs) Yes, right. And that's where I saw somebody on stage and he shared his relationship with God with such a heart and a passion that I was like, that's what I want. I want that relationship with God too. And so that's when everything changed for me. And um, I think for me, my whole life uh, kind of boils down to, you know, whenever you choose to follow Jesus, he takes you on an adventure Mm -hmm. and only God, I think is probably uh, the answer to a lot of things. So from then on, like, I'm such a homebird, yet only God uh, could call me over to, I went to St Andrews, I studied theology, it was really good, it was challenging, I was in a class with uh, atheists and monk, a monk (laughs) as well, Um, it was such a range of people, some people who loved Jesus, but who had very different beliefs, and so put all that together in a room, and you know, I think you and church became really important spaces for me to come back to the heart of really what matters in following Jesus. Um, probably my confidence grew in university. I started to push out and think about discipling others and I led small groups in CU. I led um, a small group in my church for the years that I was in university which was really important I think in my growth and development and my relationship with God as well and and mentoring other ones um younger than me as well and then again only God could call me right back from the place that I really did enjoy and love (laughs) right back to Northern Ireland um in the middle of an economic crisis uh so do you know when you graduate and you think God, you've got great plans for me. You're going to do something amazing. You're going to blow my mind. And I don't know what I had in my head, but it wasn't like, to be honest, it wasn't graduating in the middle of an economic crisis and then waitressing. So that's what I did for a year. Um, And I think God showed me so much in just the little things in that year. Um, And then I went and I became an intern in Exodus Again, only God. And for anyone who doesn't know, Exodus is a youth discipleship charity. And I never thought I would work with young people, (laughs) believe it or not. Um, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's for me. But uh, 
I, it was just undeniable God wanted me to step into it and there birthed my absolute love of walking alongside young people and so I worked with them for about seven years in fundraising and communications and then centre manager for a bit and then again only God could nudge me on to uh, East Antrim with Scripture Union <coughs> as a skills worker, East Belfast and then now I'm Youth Ministry Coordinator and so really in uni it was really just that kind of love of discipling others of journeying alongside others as well and the importance of that I think exodus really birthed in me a love of young people um, that has never gone away so that's a snapshot of who I am amazing um and you sound like you've had such a journey of faith um but getting more into scripture union um you mentioned there that you work at scripture union um, and I know that Scripture Union aims to make God's good news known to children, young people and families and to encourage people of all ages to meet God daily through the Bible and prayer so that they may come to personal faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, grow in Christian maturity and become both committed church members and servants of a world in need. Um, for me, I've seen the amazing work that SU do with children and young people. Um, but for those listening who maybe don't know a lot about SU, can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah. So, as you said, our mission is to share God's good news with children, young people and families right across Northern Ireland. And so we do that through our camps and missions and then through our schools ministry. Um, So we have an incredible staff team at Scripture Union. uh, But really, the most important thing with SU is that we're a volunteer movement, much like yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we literally couldn't do anything of what we do without the hundreds upon hundreds of volunteers that are a part of the ministry on a yearly, monthly or a daily basis. Um, At the minute, we've just finished. It's hard to believe the summer is finally over. Um, But we finished our camps and missions for 2023, and we've had 14 camps and 20 missions right across Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's just amazing. Honestly, God is so good. And I think camps and missions, for anyone that doesn't know, it's an opportunity in the summer to invite children sometimes as young as three, right up to 18, um, to take part in a week-long kind of programme. And so that's run by local as well as maybe further afield volunteers that come in and they run this programme of games, um, lots of discussion groups, and more importantly, a chance for children and young people to explore the Bible and explore who God says they are. Uh, This year, in my new role, I got to go, I got the absolute joy of visiting a lot more camps and missions than probably I ever have. And every time I went into a camp or a mission, I was blown away by what God is doing across our country, uh, how committed, how passionate the leaders are, not just for that like camper mission taking place, but actually for the locality of where it's positioned. They understand you're not just impacting a child or a young person, you're impacting a family, you're impacting um, a community as well. And so for me to see a room filled with younger leaders, Mm -hmm. just buzzing absolutely buzzing to share about who God is with children and young people (coughs) praising worshiping praying and preparing so well for it like how could you not be blown away by that I think um I love seeing schisms in areas where I know there's not loads of youth work going on at the minute um on a regular basis and so you hope that it sparks something I think in that area like um, it might be the beginning of something I think you could see the young people really valued, you know that investment for that week um and I suppose what I loved, like just one story was I was in a at a schism and this wee girl at the end of the session comes running up to her leader and she said, uh, I would love to share my testimony of how I came to faith. And wow. she came to faith through the schism many, many years ago. And she wanted to share it at the Friday night bonfire, you know, the the cool youth <laughs> like night that you have yeah. on the last night of schism. She says, I want to share it there because I want my friends to follow Jesus. Um, and then I heard a week later that actually she shared her story and five people came to faith. That's so incredible. Right. It was just it's and that's like one of hundreds of stories like that. And so we're so thankful for this summer um, and for camps and missions. I suppose on the flip side, as camps and missions kinds of winds down and well, in some ways winds down <laughs> and kind of reviews the year uh, at the minute, our skills department is kicking right back up into gear and so uh, 
after a summer of resource writing and strategizing, our skills team are ready to roll a little bit in this term. And so we have 11 workers, skills workers, based in 10 areas right across Northern Ireland. And their goal is to share God's good news with children, young people and families. And we do that in primary, post-primary and SEN skills. And so they do that through three ways. They do that by taking assemblies, RE lessons, SU groups. They also uh, equip Christian teachers. So that might be gathering teachers in the local area who will fight the hardest and be the most passionate about their young people or children coming to faith. And they gather them together and they pray with them, resource them, cheer them on, maybe allow a space for them to connect with other teachers, to share ideas. That's happened as well. Um, and then we equip Christian pupils as well who are incredible across our skills. And on the 7th of October, actually this year, we're gathering hopefully around 100 young people who I know who are above fourth year plus and uh, some of them could be on committees of SU groups some of them are just excited uh, they're in an SU and they're excited with what God's going to do some of them might have never been to SU but want to maybe start an SU in their school and so it's incredible again just when you gather young people what happens but um, and how God uses that and then the final thing that we would do as a skills worker is that we empower the local church and so I always say we're only there to open a door of a skill so that a church can build a long lasting relationship with it. So that might be training the church um, in assemblies or like how to take assemblies in a way um, that's appropriate for a skill setting. It might be uh, teaching them how to training them in RE lessons that they can then carry on in the school. But I think more and more what we're looking at is how does a church become a part of the fabric of a skill? Uh, so a skill is the hub of a community it's where people come twice a day and they gather and so as church we want to be there um so we've just appointed a chaplaincy coordinator which is really exciting a new step for us and so um they're going to be overseeing east belfast and north down and ours but starting to really explore like what does that mean to be a part of the fabric of a skill as well so god's doing great things um and hopefully that gives you a wee bit of an overview (laughs) brilliant thank you so much sir um Sarah, you have um, been in a role where you've spoken in schools, within youth groups um, and other church groups um, to children and young people about the Bible. Um, in your opinion, um, what are the challenges that young or children and young people are facing when they're reading the Bible today? What are the practical things you do in your own personal time with God to help with reading and understanding the Bible, especially when some of the parts of the Bible can be really tricky to understand? Yeah. I think probably one of the the challenges that stands out to me is that right now we live like we live in this really fluid culture of really anything goes. So if you've heard the motto, you know, you do you. You ever heard that? Yeah. So um, or we say, well, you live your truth. I live my truth. And those two things seem very, very separate. Um, They don't seem to come together very often in our culture. And so. When you live in a culture where anything goes and then children and young people who are surrounded with that culture, I think, come to read the Bible, suddenly they're confronted with the God who wants their best, who wants their good, but actually anything doesn't go. Um, And that can be really tricky. I think when you read the Bible, when they take time to read the Bible and you read Jesus and his disciples and then in particular Paul lay out in the New Testament how to live your life for God every day, I think... For a young person, at times that can feel suddenly like a wee bit of red tape being put around their lives. And or I think I've heard young people say it's the Bible's behind the times because they can't put it into their own context. It doesn't like translate at the moment for them and that's really hard for them. And so I think for young people, if they don't understand or trust or know the nature of God whenever they're reading the Bible, then it could feel like an impossible rule book. And I think that's a bit of a challenge. And I think that's why organisations like BB, SU, Exodus, Crown Jesus, LMI, Made for More, Love for Life, you could go on and on, um, are really important. I also think that our churches, more than ever, um, we really need to think about how we engage children and young people in the Bible. 
I think as parents, as aunties and uncles, we need to start taking ownership of our child's understanding of the Bible and what it means to truly follow Jesus. Because our children and young people are already going to be walking into rooms where there's going to be really persuasive arguments mm. about um, about what I'm doing quotation marks you can't see it but quotation marks of following the like real freedom um and for other people um they'll create an argument around actually you'll have more freedom walking away from Jesus than walking towards him um and so I think that's worth our time I think that's worth our energy and our creativity in finding ways to engage children and young people in the bible I think it takes, you know, there's the saying, it takes the village to raise a child. And so it's not just one of us, but actually every single one of us um, have a responsibility to do that, to help with that. So that's one of the challenges. I think another more practical challenge is that we live in kind of this fast food culture where speed of information and getting things as fast as possible is really celebrated but also it's something that we do innately all the time so if you want something you know delivery you'll get it in a second um if you want to know a piece of information you just google it and so with that what I see increasingly is that we're treating bible passages like fast food um just hit me with a bible verse and make me feel better a little bit or I think what I see, especially with young people or younger leaders, is if they're giving a topic, you know, so uh, we want you to talk about how to trust in God, they will literally Google um, top verses on how to trust in God and they'll just take those verses out of thin air. I think actually someone once said to me, do you know, it's like we're in front of, you know, we've got a salad bowl in our in our hands and we're in front of a salad counter and we're just picking and choosing what we want. And sometimes that might work when they put it all together. But actually, when we come across verses that are taken out of context, sometimes they can be confusing and actually, um, you know, th- their meaning is actually taken the wrong way. And I think, you know, in that kind of fast food kind of culture and and taking things really fast we need to take time to slow it down the bible is called our daily bread we're meant to savor it we're meant to take time you know I love McDonald's but I'm not going to go to McDonald's every night of the week I really enjoy sitting down and taking time to digest my food to savor it Mm -hmm. and that's the way the bible should be for us you know and for for children and young people so how do we I suppose slow children and young people down a wee bit to take time to read the Bible um, and to understand the context. I think for me in my own walk, it's really been about accountability has been a major thing. Um, being honest with your friends and your family about where you're at. You know, sometimes you're on fire at the minute in my church. We've got prayer and fasting week and it's great. So everyone's like diving into the Bible, ready to, ready to um, read it. But there will be other weeks where it'll be really, really hard. And so I suppose... How do you, who's around you to help kind of nudge you along? But also, are you in a small group? What rhythms do you have in place? You know, do you have a small group that you're a part of? Um, I suppose whenever I've struggled to read the Bible, and I'm as I wrote this, I was like, do you know, I might do this again. <laughs> I put a Bible right beside a hair dryer. Um, that, and so I dry my hair every day. And so what I did was every time I dried my hair, I'd read a psalm. And so that just meant every morning without fail, whether I was having a good day or a bad day, I was reading the Bible. Yeah. Um, and so if you are a doer like me, go for a walk and listen to the Bible. So many young people struggle with just sitting down and reading. So I'm like, maybe you just need to ease your way into it. So go for a walk and listen to the Bible. Um, if there's a topic you don't understand, um, talk about it ask questions about it don't ignore it and have it kind of nudging in the back of your mind and um, listen to a podcast or read around it so there's just a few wee things brilliant and I think the accountability um mm-hmm. thing that you mentioned that's really important you know having people around you that can come alongside you and say where are you at with this mm-hmm. you know um is there something that you don't understand about the Bible? Can I show you? Um, and I think that's really important when coming to the Bible mm-hmm. is having that accountability, maybe joining a small group and yeah. um, joining a youth group that you can read the Bible together. Um, and that helps with understanding as well. Yeah, And I think we can assume, you know, that we're providing that young people will just know those spaces yeah. and where they are. And so I think the challenge, I suppose, is just keep offering out those opportunities, you know, keep talking about small groups, keep talking about mentoring. And if you don't have those opportunities, then find ways of creating them um, within your church family, I think, because 
that will be the thing that will will really help a young person whenever they're feeling a wee bit rocky. Yeah. Um, then looking at how children and young people are actually responding to the Bible, um, and as part of your role engaging with young people and telling them about the good news of the gospel, it's at the centre. Can you tell us how young people are responding to biblical teaching today um, within their society in different contexts, for example, schools, youth groups and kids clubs? Mm. Um, yeah, I think across the board, maybe there's a bit of a strong narrative that doors are closing. So opportunities are closing down, whether that's in schools or in youth groups or with children. Um, I think there's a bit of a narrative around young people don't really want to hear about God anymore. Um, But I think sometimes we can use that a little bit as our get out of jail free card, you know, like excuse. I think I would say, yes, I understand there are increased challenges. There's no doubt about that. But actually... Uh, there are also increased opportunities and I see that across the board across our schools and also um, in kids groups and youth groups as well and I think that's something that we need we need to expectantly hope and pray for God to work in all of those kind of increased opportunities that we're seeing it might not be strikingly obvious but they might just be small moments and we need to take hold of them I think sometimes we can forget for some young people, this might legitimately be the first time they hear about Jesus. And so there's this increased wonder and amazement in who God is. And sometimes we take that God for granted. Uh, so an, an example is I was in a classroom and I was talking about Jesus walking on water. And this kid just looked up and he goes, what? Like Jesus walked on water. And And I was like, yes. And as I was saying to him, yes, and I believe as a Christian that Jesus walked on water. I realised the absolute wonder, one with this wee boy, like his eyes, he just lit up. He was like, and you believe, and that actually happened. I was like, well, Christians believe that, you know, that's what we read in the Bible. And then we started to talk about the feeding of the 5,000 or healing a blind man. And I realised, you know, God is amazing. You know, yeah. there is so much wonder. There is so much amazement. Um, and sometimes we can forget that actually for children, for young people, there is a lot of wonder actually if in what we believe in, you know, and who we follow. And there's also a real joy, I think, in sharing the power of God Um with children and I think you know uh, there is a a lot of our children have never maybe opened a bible in their lifetime and again like you could see that as a shut door or you could see it as this massive opportunity where I'm sitting in a p6 class I'm handing out bibles and this child as I hand him a bible he looks a bit worried and he goes oh I'm not a Christian (laughs) so it was like he wasn't allowed he thought he wasn't allowed to hold the bible and uh, I said that's okay we're going to explore the bible together and we're going to find out what Christians believe about God and uh, he took the bible and he started and he had such a smile on his face and he opened it up and he flicked through the pages and he said I've never I've never read the bible before And for those three weeks, that wee boy, every time, was just filled with wonder, filled with excitement for what what we were going to learn that day. And so I think there's a bit of a sense of, I believe this is the book, the best book that you will ever read. Like, I am so convicted of that. Sometimes I can forget that as I'm communicating or as I'm looking at the world around me, I'm seeing doors shutting down and I'm like, actually... It's, it is like God opens a genuine window mm-hmm. and actually there are opportunities. Um, so we need to have the eyes to see them. I think that we live in a time whenever I see young people desperate for a sense of hope. You know, we're in this kind of post-COVID world and just feels, it could feel like the whole world is crashing in on itself. And I'm like, they're desperate for a sense of hope and foundations, um, something stable in an ever-changing world. And we believe that God is our rock And we believe in the hope that he is our hope for eternity. And so we need to own that more. And we need to realise that actually Jesus is for everyone, not just particular people, for absolutely everyone. Um, I think young people, I don't know, on their faces, they don't always communicate, you know, what's actually going on. And so I've walked into rooms and I've shared the Bible with them. We've we've talked about Jesus. And I've maybe looked at a particular young person. I'm like, they're really hating what I'm saying because their face, you know, they're glaring their face off at me. And I'm like, oh no. Uh, 
without a shadow of a doubt, that young person will be the one that will come to me to ask, either ask more questions or to say, and it really surprises me most times, it's, you know, oh, that really stood out for me today. Thank you. Um, and so often don't be put off by faces, uh, by expressions whenever you're sharing with young people in particular, I think, about the Bible, because they're maybe just thinking you don't know what's going on in there or how God's working. Um, there are challenges, I think, talking to an RE teacher, she said she had an open day recently and parents and young people just walked right past her room um, because they didn't really understand the point of it. And I think for young people, that question of so what is really, really important. Um, what does that actually mean? So so often they're hearing the Bible and they're just hearing, yep, Jonah and the whale, Daniel and the lion's den, and we need to kind of land it a little bit for young people um, as they get older of like, so what does that actually mean? How do you live that out in your context? And so it could be tempting for us to constantly give answers to young people, but it'll either go over their head or, they, or they'll dismiss it. Um, so we need to ask, we need to be like the best, we need to ask the best questions um, with young people. We need to think about discussion times and allow actually more energy I think sometimes to go into that we put so much energy into giving young people a talk and that's really important um but I would say 10 minutes and then allow like 20 minutes of a discussion and um, allow young people to kind of tease it out and explore what it means and um, discuss with their peers wrestle with the passages create some kind of resilience around you know, when, when they con are confronted with a difficult passage, actually don't ignore it or don't write it off. Um, ask questions, yeah. explore, you know, read around it, uh, give them a wee bit of the tools that we need. Um, and then on the flip side, you also see young people, you know, I was in a school and post-COVID, they just didn't have the energy to start an SU group and um, the teachers didn't have the time or the energy. But these four girls were so passionate about an SU group restarting in their school that it took six months but finally the SU group got restarted and we it just, you just saw it expanding over the year we got the church involved as well but I just think and it's funny so many parents came to me to thank me for running for starting that up again and every time I was like it's not me it's these four young people who have really pushed um for more of Jesus and so I just think there's so many God is God is moving. He is on the move. Yeah. You know, there are so many opportunities for us to take hold of. If a young person looks like they're just shutting shutting off from God, actually use that as an opportunity to talk to them and spend some time with them and um, to ask them, like, what's going on? Ask them good questions. Mm -hmm. um, because often, it, you know, you could, you'll could you give them the tools to kind of wrestle with it, to, to build that kind of, um, I suppose, understanding that actually... The, I don't understand everything in the Bible and that's okay because I love and I trust the nature of God. Yeah, amazing. Um, this leads us on really nicely mm -hmm. to our next question. Um, we, Sarah, are delighted to have partnered with um, you guys yeah. at Scripture Union to create a resource um, for anchors, for juniors, for company and seniors. Um, and the resource focused on the question, what is the Bible? Can you explain to our listeners what the resource is about? Yeah, so this is a resource to help young people and children understand what the Bible really is. Uh, we believe, like I said, it's the best book you will ever read because it's so much more than a book. Yeah. It's the word of God. But what does that actually mean for a child or for a young person? For our children, it's an introduction to maybe what they've never realised before, that the Bible is one big story and that God's hand is in and through the entire Bible. Um, it's an opportunity for them to explore together what the Bible tells us about God and how to live out what the Bible says. I think for young people in particular, it is looking at the bigger picture of the Bible. But then we focus in on how in turn they can read the Bible. And so there's actually some very real um, chat, like a chat, I suppose, around the challenges of how to read the Bible and some top tips to help them engage in it better. And so with all those videos, um, there's a resource guide to help you um, run your BB night. So your entire BB night is kind of um, worked out for you, essentially, and you can pick and choose what works best. So there's games, discussion questions with lots of different ideas to help you. And so I'd say it's a really good 
uh, thing to start at the beginning of the year, but you could do it throughout the year. Um, really sets the tone um, <coughs> or bigger picture for the Bible for of the Bible. Sorry for children and young people. So. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and this resource, it's now on our um, on the BBNI website, um, and we would encourage you all to go and check it out. Um, we're so excited to see this used within BB companies across Northern Ireland and Donegal as well. Um, Sarah, thinking about your journey, is there mm-hmm. one piece of advice that you wish you had known when you were younger? Yeah, I love this question. You really made me think. Um, <laughs> I suppose it was something that I knew, but I didn't realise, if that makes okay. sense. So I didn't take hold of it. And I suppose it was uh, take it a step at a time. So uh, you can maybe tell there's a rush in me, like to do everything all at once. I get very excited and I'm like, okay, I want to do it all. Um, But I think I've had to realise more and more and check myself of actually God has this timeline. Mm -hmm. It's not me. And so sometimes I've wanted to rush either other people's journeys with Jesus or my own. And I would just, I suppose, I really wish that I'd taken hold of more, um, of just take it a step at a time that actually it's your whole life, not just your, I think when you are in your teenage life and then your 20s, you think, okay, that's when I'm going to learn everything about Jesus yeah. and then I'll just run with it. Um, your whole life you're learning about Jesus, your whole life you're going with him. And so remembering that you're a child of God, I think take it a step at a time. Amazing. Um, and just before we finish, what encouragement would you have for us? Maybe a word of encouragement for the 11,000 young people that maybe work with each week or the 2,000 leaders that serve faithfully? Yeah, I suppose I'm an auntie of nephews that go to BB. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I am so thankful, like, so thankful for BB and all, and they go to three different ones as well. And I just, I think probably for me, just never underestimate. I just think about my grandpa and the seeds that he sowed mm. um, way back then and the fruit of that in my life and the significance of that. Mm. And I just think never underestimate. I am so thankful that those boys are going along to BB and um, and all that they're going to, the fruit that will come from that, that I, you know, as people walk alongside them. And so for me, uh, I would just say, keep sowing seeds and keep showing up week in week out um for these children and young people because you are going to make a difference because God's going to use you amazing thank you um Sarah thank you for coming on to the BB and I podcast it has been great to chat with you today um and we're so looking forward to seeing the um BB and I and SU and I resource being used within our BB companies thank you thank you thank you for listening to the BB and I podcast subscribe to us on wherever you get your podcasts We look forward to joining with you 